You know what's cooler than using an image when building a website? How about making something with HTML and CSS that looks like an image? And you know what? This is super easy with container queries. In this video, we're going to make this ad with HTML and CSS, and then we're going to make it act like an image as it gets squished, expanded, and moved to other locations within the document. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so we have this Vans ad in the sidebar of the site that we're building, and it's an image. This makes it difficult to edit. A designer would need to update it and provide us with a new image if something needed to change. Also, we'd probably need multiple versions to use with source set so that it will look crisp on both high density and low res displays. So we're tasked with converting it to HTML. Now, how can we do this? Well, we could probably use viewport units, but we'd need to add extra code if we were to put the ad in different locations where its dimensions would be different, since everything would be based off of the viewport and not the container dimensions. So we could pull it off, but it would get a little messy. Instead, we could use container queries and container query units. Container queries are a little like media queries, but based off of any given container in the page instead of the overall viewport. Okay, let's check out what we're starting with. So it looks pretty good right here, but how does it do as it responds? Uh, the text and borders don't change size, so it needs some love because it's pretty broken as it stands. Now, one thing we're already doing here is we're using an aspect ratio, which allows the container to respond as an image would, so that's all good. We just need to change all the dimensions for the content to make it respond correctly too. The first step here is to provide a container to monitor for our dimensions. This will be our figure element. To use container queries here, we need to define what is known as a containment context. We can do this with the container type property. For this example, we can use a value of inline size. This is going to set up a container that will size things based off of its inline size which in this case will be the width of the figure. All right, so now we have a container to monitor. So we're now free to use container query units. And there's a lot to choose from. We can use any of these unit values. Here, we're going to use CQI, which I believe stands for container query inline. One CQI unit is equal to 1% of the width of the container. Okay, that's all we need. From here, we're just setting units as needed. Here we have a couple of custom properties that are used on several elements within this ad. Let's start with the amount this frame is inset from the outer edge of the container. Let's make it three CQI. That looks pretty good. Next, let's set the thickness of these borders here. In this case, I'm going to use the max function to prevent the borders from ever shrinking under one pixel, but I want them to be dynamic as long as they're larger than that one pixel value. So the first value is one pixel. The second value is the dynamic value. Let's make it one CQI. That looks pretty good. Now for the strong element, which is the main title, this Vans text, let's make it 25 CQI. I think that looks about right. Now for the space underneath the title, let's make it 3 CQI. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's move to the off the wall subtitle. It should be about half the size of the main title, so let's try 12 CQI. And for the space above that text, Let's go with 3CQI again. All right, for the last piece, the since 1966 label, let's go with a font size of 6CQI. And for the space above and below, we're using the logical property for padding block, which takes up to two values. The first value is the value above the text, and the second value is the value for the space below. So let's go with 2CQI above, and in our calculation, we'll leave the frame inset as is, but we'll go with 5 CQI of additional space. Okay, cool. This looks great. Let's take a look at how it responds now. As we squeeze it, everything is properly responding uniformly like we want it. 
It looks a lot like an image. It looks pretty good even when it's small and you can see that the borders never shrink below one pixel. Then when we get into really narrow widths, it gets wider and everything still looks great. How cool is this? One set of styles and it just works all the way through. As we scale it back and forth, it looks great. Now what's even more cool is that we can take our ad markup and move it to our main column region here and everything continues to work just like it would if it were an image. This is just so nice and really so cool. Remember, there's only one set of styles to pull all of this off and zero media queries involved. There's quite a bit more to container queries as a whole, so be on the lookout for future videos where I cover different aspects. But that's all for now. Until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>